Welcome to another Wildflower video from Ion Sun Valley. I'm Lisa Horton, I'm your host today, and I get to talk about some of my favorite wildflowers. We're out here on Two Dog Trail outside of Haley in the sagebrush, and there are a lot of things in bloom right now. This is one that I love to see in the spring. It's called the Nine Leaf Biscuit Root. And I'll get back to why it's called a biscuit root. We're going to talk about a couple of its other relatives today. But first, I'd like to tell you about the parsley family. This um, is the key identifying characteristic. Now, this is called an umbel. Not every plant that has an umbel is in the parsley family, but every plant in the parsley family, as far as I know, has an umbel. So what is an umbel? It's like an inside out umbrella and the ribs of the umbrella go up. They all come from the same point, just like on an umbrella. And then at the end, they have a whole nother series with a bunch of tiny flowers, little five petal tiny flowers. But when you see this umbel, you have a good guess that it's a member of the parsley family. The other thing about the parsley family is the leaves are very aromatic. Think dill, think anise, think uh, fennel, uh, and lots of our spices and herbs come from this family, like um, coriander. I said dill, um, fennel, carrots, we eat carrots, parsnips, all those have aromatic leaves, all in the parsley family. So what else about this? Well, the species name is Lomatium triturnatum. Triternatum means divided into nine parts. So if you take one leaf and you count these, the parts, the number of parts, this is all one leaf, you will find that there are usually nine, three sets of three. Triternatum meaning nine parts. Always has these pretty yellow uh, flowers, very fresh, and it can be, see this one is very, sh this one's very short. This one is a little taller. They can be from maybe three inches up to maybe uh, two feet, something like that. So I'd like to introduce you to a couple more members of this family, and then I will get back to why this is a biscuit root. So here's another member of the parsley family that's blooming at the same time as the nine leaf biscuit root out here in the sagebrush. This is the fern leaf biscuit root or fern leaf desert parsley, Lomatium dissectum. Dissectum meaning finely cut. So unlike the nine leaf biscuit root, which has those really fine little divided leaves in nine parts, this has very lacy, very divided leaves, and it reflects the species name Lomatium dissectum, dissectum meaning, you know, divided into many little parts. And you can find this, uh, this height in the sagebrush up to three and a half to four feet, depending on, I don't know, the soil, the water, you know, all that. You also can find a variety of colors in the flowers. These are actually beginning to develop seeds. And if we'd come out here uh, maybe a week ago, we would have seen yellow flowers, little yellow pom-poms, looking very much like the nine-leaf biscuit root, although larger. But for the rest of the summer, what you're going to see is this rusty color. And you can look out across the sagebrush and you will spot this, these little pom-pom heads of dark red-brown. So I s promised you that I would talk about biscuit root. What does that mean? Well, Native Americans dried the roots and they made them into a powder that they used for baking. And it supposedly has, um, supposedly tastes pretty good. The description I saw was earthy and spicy, which sounds kind of like gingerbread to me. It sounds pretty good. And the other thing that you would probably notice about this is that the uh, leaves are very spicy and aromatic smelling. The stems are, they feel hollow. They are in fact hollow. And they're really almost purpley down at their base. One of the most welcome wildflowers to see in the spring are the bluebells. 
we recognize them by these gray green leaves and these lovely blue tubular flowers. Bluebells are in the Boraginaceae, the borage family. What does that mean? Do you know the herb borage? It's very hairy leaves, but it has flowers just about the same color. It makes a good tea. The bluebells and other members of this family have five petals, uh, kind of like a phlox or a scarlet gilia, but they are united in a tube and then they don't really release. They just kind of explode like a petticoat, a, a, a skirt. And the flowers all kind of droop and face downward like this. Most of the bluebells that you would think of, and we have a number of species in our valley, are found in wet places. But this one, the sagebrush bluebell, likes it just like this. So, Mertensia oblongifolia, these oblong leaves. Um, Mertensia, kind of a lovely story, kind of an incomprehensible name, doesn't translate to something in Latin, but it's named after a botanist named Mertens, named it in honor of his father, who also was a botanist. It's so kind of a lovely thing. And then oblongifolia, they've recently changed the name of this. I'm not even gonna try to go there with the new name. They've decided that this only grows in Montana. The leaves were eaten as a pot herb. Uh, they're a little, I understand they taste like oysters. I don't know, I don't like oysters. But they're a little, if you feel the leaf, it's kind of like sandpaper or a cat's tongue. So I don't know how pleasant that would be to eat. Uh, I think I'd have to be pretty hungry. We're going to take a brief pause. We'll be right back. Better food, better price, better service. Atkinson's Market, supporting local farmers since 1956. As an independent insurance agency, we represent you to the insurance company, not the insurance company to you. This allows Wood River Insurance to be as competitive as possible. So call us today at 208-788-1100 and let Wood River Insurance represent you. When life calls for necessary add-ons, your home can pitch in to help with a new home equity line of credit from D11's bank. This is living on a whole new level. This is Community Banking. A very common wildflower this time of year is the ballhead waterleaf. And you may have looked at it, but you may not have really seen it. That's because it hides underneath these leaves, and that's one of its characteristics. But you have to take the time to move the leaves aside to see this tightly coiled sphere of beautiful purple flowers. This plant is in the water leaf family, the Hydrophilaceae, and it probably doesn't mean much to you. This plant, the ballhead water leaf, has its official name of Hydrophyllum capitatum. What does that mean? Well, hydro means water, phyllum means leaf, water leaf, and then capitatum means round head. So we have the ballhead water leaf. Water leaf. What does that mean? Well, there are some different opinions and you may take your choice. One is that the leaves are slightly thick and feel like they might be moist and have water in them. Another is that the groove lengthwise would guide water droplets down to the roots. And you can see that in a dry sagebrush environment, that could be an advantage. Then I also read that in order to eat these leaves, which both the Native Americans and the pioneers did, um, you know, I'm guessing in the early spring when you'd been living on, I don't know, dried meat or whatever it was that they lived on, they'd about eat anything green. But they had to change the water as they cooked these several times because toxic properties came out. They had to keep changing the water until that was all gone. So water, lots of changes of water, leaves, I don't know, maybe that's another possibility. Take it all with a grain of salt, as long as you know that it's a ball head water leaf. So the really cool thing about this flower is it has five petals, 
pale purple, just beautiful. And the petals are shorter than the anthers. So these little purple hair things, those are the male parts and they have these little pollen packs on the end, the, um, the anthers on the end of the filaments. So this gave rise to several interesting uh, common names, one being uh, grandma's pincushion, which you can kind of see, and woolly britches, which is, um, well, that's an interesting one. There is another species, I think in the west, a dwarf ball head water leaf, but the flowers are taller and they stick up above the leaves. So when you see these type of leaves alongside the trail, just stop and take your hand, brush the leaves aside so that you can appreciate these lovely purple flowers of the ball head water leaf. One of our really common early spring wildflowers, and that is possibly on its way out about now, so get out while you can still see it, is the goosefoot violet. These little yellow violets are just charming. Little yellow guys with little nectar guides down on the bottom petal here. Um, couldn't be prettier. The species name, Viola, is like our pansies and our Johnny Jump Ups in our yards. This, but the, uh, that's the genus, Viola, and the species name is Purpurea because they're purple on the back. You wouldn't think that when you just look at them, but there is quite a bit of purple on the back and that's a good characteristic for you to identify them by. The other thing is the leaves. So the leaves are shaped like a goose foot. Now, I don't know, I have not looked at a lot of goose's feet, but supposedly that's what a goose foot looks like. Although I'm thinking wider in the front and more like the ankle is back here, but you know, I'm not your expert on goose's feet. So as I said, a very common violet, uh, easy to identify. Look for the purple on the back. Look for the little nectar guides, the little stripes on the front. And this one is easy and is your friend. This is a really special flower. This is the chocolate lily, also called the leopard lily, um, checker lily, there are lots of names for it. It's fritillaria atropurpurea. Um, there are, there's another fritillaria that grows here in our valley really, really early in the spring, and that's the yellow bells. I bet you've seen that one. And it's actually in the seed pod stage now. But the chocolate lily comes along a little bit later, has these lovely linear blue-green leaves. These linear leaves with the parallel veins tell us that this is a monocot. Um, and it's a member of the lily family. So there's some leaves also around in this patch, single but longer blue-green leaves, and those are I'm thinking immature plants. So let's say that these flowers are pollinated and the seeds fall on the ground and they sprout and they make a little bitty plant with a tiny little, because this is a bulb plant, a tiny little bulb, but it doesn't have the strength to bloom. I, I'm thinking it's going to take quite a few years before it's ready to bloom. So these leaves are the plant growing in strength and making its bulb bigger so that it can put on the grand show here and try to get it self-pollinated and reproduce itself. The cool thing about the leopard lily, chocolate lily, whatever it is that you wanna call it. The flowers are kind of downward facing, but if you look at the inside of them, they're just spectacular. They have this ring of anthers, the male parts, and then they have this pistil that's split into three parts, really pretty. And then these speckledy, really spectacular chartreuse green and almost chocolate brown speckles on the inside. But when you look at the back of the flowers, they are very camouflaged in the sagebrush. And sometimes I think until you see one, you can't see the rest of them. If, if you know what I mean, you have to sort of like 
get an idea what you're looking for. I was out here hiking yesterday and I hiked up this trail and I saw this. And of course I got really excited because this is one of my favorites. But then I thought I would put a, a, a stone by it on the way back down the trail so we could talk about it today. And I couldn't find it. And the reason is it is so well camouflaged against the dirt and the sagebrush and the grass that it's very hard to see. So when you see one of these chocolate lilies, you can count yourself really fortunate. So that ends our segment today of our wildflower video. We've talked about parsleys, we talked about bluebells, chocolate lily, and I sure hope you've enjoyed it.